way, he's been a huge success for me in the Premiership. Would you go with that, Matthew? Well, he's definitely spent a lot of money. I mean, there's no disputing that. But one has to look at how he amassed his wealth. And his QC, Jonathan Sumption, admitted in open court, in his case against Boris Berezovsky, that he had secured his money in a rigged privatisation. Essentially, the oligarchs did a deal with Boris Yeltsin, who was running for re-election. We will back your campaign. We will give you free advertising if you sell us, sell us the mineral wealth of the Russian people at a knockdown price. Sumption's admitted this. It is not in dispute. And that stolen money, if I can use the word, certainly fraudulently got, is what is bankrupt rolling Chelsea, which has paid for the academy, inflated uh, first-team football salaries, and you can't look at this in a purely footballing context. You have to look at the wider moral context, and in that sense, it has been a deeply corrosive influence on British football. But the, so that then, that then comes into play when you look at what Abramovich's introduction to a football club has or has not achieved. And yeah, exactly. And t Tony talked about the fact that he has continued to invest and reinvest. He was never in Chelsea to make a profit. He wasn't investing in order to secure a return, which is the way most people operate with commercial assets. He bought Chelsea for protection. He knew that there was a risk that Putin would come after him, as he had done with other oligarchs, for his role in this very dubious business practice under Yeltsin. And he knew that one of the best ways of protecting himself from being got at by the Russian authorities was to associate himself with a highly visible British asset. And he chose Chelsea Football Club. There's no real emotional uh, background to that. That was a straightforward, hard-headed decision from a very ruthless and manipulative businessman. So to talk about it in terms of, oh, he's great because he's invested in British football, look at the reason he did it and look at the money he's using. Yeah, if you as, don't as, look at that, Matthews, you're completely missing the as point. As Tony made the point there, he has grown to love the club and grown to be loved by the football fans who don't really care well, how he may or may not have made his money. I think, I think you're probably right to say that Chelsea fans rather like Abramovich because they are looking at it specifically from what it has done in terms of bolstering the success of a football club. But imagine if a British businessman had, had essentially got hold of uh, British assets that are owned by the people and bought a club in Russia you would expect the Russian people to have an issue with that. I certainly have an issue with Abramovich and I think a lot of neutral fans do as well. Uh, that, that said, though, that said, Matthew, I just wanted to pick up. I mean, you've said what you've said about this situation, the political situation, where the money came from. He has put Chelsea on the map. He's put British football on the map. Whether it's spending in excess or not, the reason for the Premier League standing one, as one of the most exciting, uh, uh, you know, football leagues in the world now is surely because of Chelsea. So can you see that separated now or is it very difficult for you to sort of do that? I think that's a, a fair point. Although I would say Manchester United was a much more significant catalyst for the growth of the Premier League. I think Sir Alex Ferguson, what he did at United, the mystique of United, the uh, rebuilding of the club from the ashes of Munich and so on and so forth. I mean, Chelsea's added to that a bit. Uh, you can say that Manchester City has as well. But I think it's also worth looking at the the context in terms of what football has become. I mean, at the early time, part of the 20th century, it was a community institution. Then it became a profit-making institution with the growth of the Premier League. Now, top football clubs are not bought for commercial reasons. Abramovich was the first to buy it for political reasons. It's the same with Abu Dhabi. It's the same with Qatar and Paris Saint-Germain. They're not buying it to make money. Financial fair play came in to stop them losing as much money as they were. They, they are buying it essentially for very straightforward political reasons. In Abramovich's case, to protect himself from retribution from Putin. In the case of Paris Saint-Germain and Manchester City, it is these small, vulnerable Gulf states associating themselves with visible, culturally significant, iconographic assets that will protect them if there's any fallout from a conflict between Israel and Iran. <laughs> players and ex-players don't see it that way, do they? Well, no, obviously, you know, I, I just know that in my period of playing football, there I've had a few dodgy owners. And I wouldn't just associate it with Abramovich. I happened to play in Marseille where, you know, corruption was pretty well known and widespread in the game at certain times. And I wouldn't say that, you know, I think there's been a number of owners, and there still are in the modern game, that have, do have other intentions than just, you know, and it's happened not just at the, the very top of the game, it's happened at League One, it's happened in conference, it's happened in League Two, it's, it's been across the board. Uh, I think it's a very hard... I try to... You know, I try to ignore, Matthew, the fact that, you know, I just feel you 
I want to look at the sporting sense and the success of the club and, you know, really how far can I take it? Of, you know, there are many, many business people who have done things that don't quite toe the line. And sometimes it goes way beyond that line, like you're su suggesting with Roman Abramovich. But I don't know the full details. Do you know, you it, recall. It, it, uh, it, I, I did go to the Rolls <laughs> building. For, for that. But I'll tell you, it is interesting. If you look at what's happened to football over the last 25 years, there is no cultural outlet for somebody to associate them with that will give them more visibility and profile. There is nothing. Mm. It's truly incredible. And, and you would was argue this is what he's been wanting all the time? That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about with Qatar. That's what it's all about with Abu Dhabi. That's all, what it was all about with Abramovich. These big purchases are all about exploiting the cultural significance of football. There is no bigger cultural so significance. You, 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 you could argue that with many businesses, though, in, in the world. You've got exploitation. It's out there in many industries. It's not just football. Well, if you look, at, huge if you look at the Abu Dhabi Sovereign Wealth Fund, they've not just bought Manchester City, they've bought Harrods. Sorry, Qatar bought Harrods, the Shard, uh, the Chrysler Building in New York. But I don't think anything does it in terms of real visibility as much as football. It's amazing what it's become. But it's, again, it's a game Matthew, of, getting back to the original yeah. question, Abramovich, good or bad thing for Chelsea? Definitely good for Chelsea. And if I, could say one, <laughs> if I could say one positive thing, one of the most extraordinary matches I've seen as, as a journalist was the second leg against Barcelona in the Champions mm -hmm. League. Yeah. When they went behind, they got a goal, didn't they, just before yeah. half-time. And then the resilience of their defending in the second half, it was miraculous. I've never seen mm. as dogged a performance, particularly from a club that doesn't have a reputation for having unity. You know, often there's a, the people talk about a cultural problem in the dressing room at Chelsea. In that match, they were magnificent. So I don't want to say anything against them as a club and as players, but I do think the owner has exerted a really corrosive in, uh, influence on the game. Gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. Those <laughs> Matthews and uh, Tony's views on Sky Sports News this afternoon. Thank you both very, very much. Interesting. Thank, Thank you very much indeed, both of you. Okay.